which brings us to uh, the Mayor's Youth Council Program 2020 through 2021 update. Mr. Jury. Previously, the Council approved a revised syllabus to expand opportunities offered to the Mayor's Youth Council. Vice Mayor Lori Pister was assigned to coordinate with the school in its selection of participating students for this year's program. The school notified the city that the Mayor's Youth Program is not being offered to students this fall due to the COVID-19. Uh, however, they're going to reevaluate the program. It says we're spring in there, but I think we're gonna, they're going to do it in January. So we'll do a, um, an abridged version, which won't be that abridged. I think they can get everything done they're supposed to get done. Um, as you know, we expanded the program, added meetings, added this and that. Uh, and our, if, they, if they're uh, willing to do it, I think they will be. We will, uh, the vice mayor will be selecting students in January, in Feb January and we'll activate it right after that, and uh, off we go. So hopefully we'll still have it. It's just not going to start um, in the fall semester. It'll be the January semester. And uh, really, that was up that just to give you an update on the Mayor's Youth Program. Does anyone have any questions on the Mayor's Youth Program? All right, well then we will move on to tab six, press release on lower property tax millage rates. Uh, Mr. Jury. Council Member Roy Stevenson has made a request to discuss with you, this council, its approval to issue a press release on the City Council's action to lower the tax rates at its September 16th, 2020 Council meeting. Uh, in particular, uh, for reasons described on the attachment, and I gave you an attachment uh, in which uh, the reasons are laid out as to why he is asking that a press release be issued on the decreasing of the millage rate, um, and it all comes down uh, to uh, the advertisement that was uh, placed in the newspaper uh, recently on uh, the millage rate. Uh, in particular, what he's looking at doing is issuing a press release that uh, enumerates the following things. On September 16th, the City Council voted to again lower the city's property tax millage rate as follows. Lowered the property tax rate from 6.95 to down to 6.90. Lowered the debt service tax rate from 0.29 to 0.26. This year is the second year in a row the city council has lowered the property tax rate. This is the lowest city property tax rate in five years. Reserve appropriations for the city budget was increased. Lowered the city budget for next year. Additional taxes were collected to offset the increased cost of maintaining a similar level of service for police, fire, parks, library, and other services. For questions, you may attend a city council meeting or obtain direct contact numbers or emails for each city council member by calling City Hall. And I put the number in here to call City Hall. Um, so with that, Mr. Stevenson uh, talked to the council and you guys can decide if you want to issue that press release. Thank you, Mr. Drew. I did get input from the audience. Uh, Mr. Yoakum? Hi. I just spent an hour with uh, one of the deputies, one of the appraisers over at Kerry Baker's office. And uh, I've been looking at this, and I love it uh, when we have people with legal background that start talking about accounting and taxes. Um, the Taxes, as you know, are based upon two things. One is the millage rate, and the other is the valuations. Okay, I've looked at the two schedules that are available on Kerry Baker's website, and talking to the staff, they gave me the one for this year that just came out. I mean, it isn't even published yet. And your, ta your valuations for this city on a form that you filled out and submitted to them was about over 7%. The valuation last year was 10%. Okay, now when you reduce the millage rate, the little tiny amount that you did this year, uh, that means that the actual tax bill to most people, if they had any valuation increase, is going to go up. Okay, but you're trying to imply, or Mr. Stevenson is trying to imply that, well, we reduced your taxes, you didn't. 
that millage rate was not there. I have a schedule from Kerry Baker that he published on his Facebook page. It lists quite a few cities. I'm going to give you all a copy of this. Um, this is not on the, it's on his Facebook page. He published this. I don't think it's published one, but he, he listed all the cities that went to the rollback rate, including last night I was at Mount Dora. They went to full rollback rate. But Tavares, no rollback rate. And so most of the cities recognize that you're in a pandemic economy. A lot of predictions that I read from economic reports and everything is that this next year and after the first of the year when all these rules related towards you can't evict people and forbearance and other things like that, you're going to see eviction rates go up a lot. You're going to see bankruptcies being filed and so forth. And I think that it was a mistake to do that. And so this press release, in my opinion, is trying to offset what you guys really did for it, is you voted for a really tiny reduction in the millage rate when the valuations have gone up. Now, I have yet, but I will go and get copies of selected um, trim notices that show the tax increases, and then we'll be able to have a sample of those within Tavares. So, I'll give you this, but I think that it's a mistake for you to uh, consider this press release because, uh, as I've talked about before, there's ways of, uh, of wording things so that you're avoiding what the real issue is because this statement doesn't talk at all about valuation increases. You're avoiding the issue. And, and so, people are going to get hit with that. Mr. Yoakum, your time is so, up, but please say your name and address for the clerk. Vance, last name Yoakum. And I'm at 12619 to Barry. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, and you can leave the papers on the corner here uh, for a little while. Uh, in the corner of this desk right here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone from the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Then I'm going to close public input. Council, do you have any questions? I'd like to hear uh, Mr. Stevenson and other people on this board council if you have anything you'd like to share first. Sure, yes, sir. <clears throat> As the proponent of this, um, I would like to first start out by saying, uh, Mr. Yoakum, appreciate your input, sir. You know that my telephone number is available to you on the city's website. I welcome you to reach out to me, and I'd be happy to sit down with you and take all the time necessary for you and I to hash out our differences on this. But what I want to talk about with council, because we're not able to talk about this unless we're in a public forum on the record, I want folks to know the truth. The way your tax burden is calculated, and I would prefer instead of talking about your tax burden, I'd like to call it paying your fair share. Folks should be required to pay their fair share to live in our slice of paradise. And the way that is calculated is by the county property appraiser evaluating the value of property. It has nothing to do with city council. Once you do the math on that calculation of the value of your property, you then apply a multiplier. That multiplier is commonly called the millage rate. And folks love to get all up in arms and jump up and down and yell and scream about it. It is simply a multiplier based upon the value of any piece of property to arrive at the number we need to balance our budget. So what happens is you get things in the newspaper, uh, Mr. Drury, that I called you about. When uh, some friends of mine showed that to me, and said that that's what's being published. That is so incredibly misleading. That is not what we did. City Council did not and cannot raise the taxes by ourselves. It was an increase in your property values, which makes it seem to me that everyone would say, yay, I made a good investment in Tavares, the value of my property, has increased, which means I have more equity, which means I have more value. Should I ever tend to sell it or pass it along to some heir? Seems to me that folks would be happy about that. But instead of being happy about that, folks want to cling to this talking point, which I would call a lie, that we raise taxes. We, in fact, lowered the military. The county 
property appraiser increase the value of your property as a result of that, despite the fact that we lowered your millage rate, your actual tax burden, which is paying your fair share, that increase. If it went up by $24, when you divide that by 12 months in a year, we're talking $2. You're paying $2 a month to live in a slice of paradise. I have no interest in Tiberius being Mount Dora. Mount Dora can be Mount Dora. I prefer Tiberius, and that's why I live here. That's why my business is here. That's why I'm on city council. I love every single person in the city of Tiberius. They're all my neighbors, and I will treat them all equally. It is one thing in my estimation for a buffalo to walk off the cliff. It is something quite different for 5,000 buffalo behind him to walk off that same cliff. It seems appropriate to me when we all recognize that there are nefarious folks on this planet and those nefarious folks will use these talking points to mislead and tell lies and say that we raise taxes when in fact what we truly did, what the truth is, is we lowered the military. It's the truth. The citizens of Terry should know it. The folks that are not here all the time are not having the advantage of being here to hear us talk. Everyone needs to know. The people that don't attend, out of 18,000 people, there are about, what, 30 people here? People need to know what we truly did so that this misinformation cannot be spread as if it's the truth because it's not. That is my point. I am very serious about this. What we do, of all the things we do, we make decisions to collect money from the citizens of Tiberias, who are my neighbors, all of them, including me, and we decide how to spend that money. There's nothing more serious that we do, and people need to know the truth about what we do, not this misinformation. It's required by statute, and I appreciate that. So let the statute require that, but let us be the ones that tell the truth to folks. That's my point. Mr. Singer, do you have any further questions? I don't have any questions. I just have a couple of comments. Um, I mean, looking over this, everything that I see here is completely true. I mean, this is exactly what the city of Tiberias has done. Um, Mr. Yoke, you're always talking about transparency. To me, this is transparent. This is telling the, uh, the voting public what the city of Tiberias has done this past year. Um, we are mandated by the state of Florida that when we have our millage, that we have to put a notice in the paper. And that notice, according to the state of Florida, says that we raised taxes. You didn't include that Did in the agenda. No, it was not on the online agenda. Mr. Yelton, please stop speaking. You have your time. Does the state of Florida ever come out and say that they raise taxes by having us pay our 6% sales tax rate every year? Cost of goods goes up. The sales tax rate does not go down. Every year we're paying 6% sales tax. So to me, I mean, this is being transparent. This is giving the public the truth. It's giving them even more information that will never provide it. They can contact any council member to discuss this further. Um, I don't see a problem with the city of Tenaries being proud of what we've done. And I think something like this um, would be great to, to let the, the public know what's going on in the city of Tenaries. So I support this. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Ms. Quigas, do you have anything to add? Um, I'm just curious, what was the date that this appeared in the newspaper saying that we had a tax increase? Um, let's see. I believe it was the 14th. Yeah, it was the 14th. It was the Sunday before your final hearing. And we're required by statute. The city is required by statute on the exact language that we have to put in the paper. So that was out before we actually did it. I think. All right. Anything else, Ms. Weeks? No. Ms. Fister? Well, I'm kind of feeling like the buffalo a little bit, if you want the truth. <laughs> about to go over the cliff here. I mean, I don't know. My, yeah, I understand what you're saying, and, and you're exactly right about the millage. We lowered the millage. And, 
you know, that is because of the property values, people will pay more. Uh, that's always bothered me because it's, you're going to pay more. But I understand this is the truth also. I, I understand that this makes perfect sense. I'm just worried about, I'm not worried about, these are some of the things that I don't like when you say these things, but it's not true. But it is true. You, you see how this is kind of gray? I mean, people don't understand this, and they truly don't. We understand it, but people don't. So it's, it's hard for me to say, you know, we lowered the millage rate, but we didn't lower your taxes. And people, like during campaigns, they use that all the time. I lowered your taxes. Well, no, you didn't, because you, we don't do the taxes. So I just, I like everything to be transparent and not have a play on words. Um, I'm not really seeing anything here that says that we are trying to put something over on someone, but you know, I don't know, I'm uneasy about it. Okay, I have a couple questions. Um, just to be specific, we're asking to release something that says about the tax rate, not the collected taxes, correct? Oh, it says you collected, read the number, the bottom. Additional taxes were collected to offset the increased cost of maintaining a similar level of service, release, fire, parks, library, and other services. So it's saying, so it's, saying it's basically saying what you did. You lowered the millage rate. You collected additional taxes. Why did we collect those additional taxes? What do you mean? When it says additional taxes were collected to also set the increased cost level of service for police, fire, parks, library, and other services. So we collected, it says additional taxes were collected. Where did we collect those from? Meaning you collected more taxes next I'm just, year? I'm just reading exactly what it says here. Uh, from the property owners, the people who had a piece of property that increased in value. That increased in value. You think we could add some language to that effect to make it very clear for everyone who reads it that the rate went down, the property taxes or property values went up, so additional taxes were collected. Why don't we say the cost of value of the property went up? Um, okay. Second, um, I know that this is a press release. We're not paying to publish it. We're just releasing it for anyone else who wants to publish it. Correct. It's just a standard press release that we would put out there, like we do all the other press releases. Does it cost the city money to do a press release? No. Well. Our public communications director. No, it does not cost us more money. Justice Baker is doing a walk in? Yes. All right. Ms. Wiggins? My, my comment would be that it is important for us to identify who uh, designates the property values because we do not designate the property values. That comes from the property appraiser's office. I think that would be important to probably put in there. That is a county level position, not a city Exactly. So you could say because the uh, values uh, of property as determined by the property appraiser went up, additional taxes were collected. And, and add county property appraiser, so they don't think the city has a property appraiser. County yeah. property appraiser. Okay, yeah, that's... Getting more and more transparent. Can I add one more complicating issue? It's, it's not just the value of properties went up, but the each year when the property appraiser calculates our tax base, he looks at annexations and he looks at changes of status of property. So if somebody had a vacant lot in 2019 and in 2020 there's now a house, that obviously is going to go up too. And properties that you all have annexed during the year will also go up. Okay, because property values uh, went up and or annexations occurred, property, property values went up uh, as determined by the county property appraisers and or annexations occurred, additional taxes were collected. Well, the improvements would have increased the value, so you're covered there. I think we'd add the annexations, the county property appraiser, 
determining those, and then the rest, I think. Is there any further discussion by the council on this topic? Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second that as revised as. As revised. So I have a motion uh, to approve as revised and a second. Any further discussion? I, I just have one comment. Um, a lot of people will make a comment to me about rollback rate. And they say, well, the rollback rate and the rollback rate. And I ask them, what was the budget? Did it go up or down? And what I find across Florida, when you go to rollback rate, right, many cities raise the budget and are spending more money than they did in the prior year. It's very lowered its budget. So you can pick, and I'll pick, I picked a random city when I was looking at this. I think I picked uh, Marco Island. I was like, oh, you went to the rollback rate. Right. Did your budget go up? And you look at the budget, and it went up. Which means you're spending more money, more more government money. So there is, when you're talking about the rollback rate, and I know people just put that out there, you kind of need to pair it with the budget. You went to the rollback rate, and you spent more money, increased your budget for the following year. I'm always found it interesting that people never do that. In our case, the city of Tiberias, not only did you lower the millage rate, but you lowered your budget. It's the only comment I have. Back to you. Any further discussion from council? All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Which brings us to task seven, Mid Florida Homeless Coalition Proclamation to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. One of the roles that I took on when I became the new community services director was to work closer with local groups and community organizations to try to identify, get a grasp on, and help to develop programs to help prevent homelessness population here in Tiberias. One of those organizations is the Mid-Florida Coalition, Homeless Coalition. They represent four counties in this region and highlight the need to make awareness for the homeless and the hungry around, specifically in our area. The organization, that organization, is presenting a proclamation to the Lake County Board of County Commissioners asking to declare the week of November 15th through the 22nd as National Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week. So before you today, we're bringing a request from the Mid-Florida Homeless Coalition to have the City of Tiberias join a list of other partners in the county to go on that proclamation that's going before the county commissioners. So before you is the options of either adding our name to that list or not. And I'm here to answer any questions and hopefully have your support. I just want to add one comment. Uh, when uh, Scott took on the job, I asked him how he would feel about incorporating homelessness into uh, community services. And it's one of the areas that all of our cities are doing more and more. Um, uh, we haven't done enough, I think, in Lake County as cities, um, and we need to do more, and we need to all play our part in it. And he uh, said, I'll be happy to take on those additional duties. And so I have assigned him to um, be more involved in homelessness issues on behalf of the city ferries, go to the seminars, go to the conferences, work with the county, just make sure that we're doing our fair share and part in addressing homelessness in our community. And I just want to thank you for taking that additional responsibility on. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Turing. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Seeing no public input, I'm going to close public input at this time. Uh, Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Aldrich? I'll make a motion to approve. Sorry. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 to 0. Thank you. Brings us, thank you, Mr. Aldrich. Brings us to tab 8. Request uh, for council's approval for equipment for auction, Ms. Hogan. Thank you, Mr. I'm sitting in the corner over there, so I wanted to get up here so I could see all of you. All right, the item before you um, 
some background on it is the city has various equipment, including vehicles, street sweeper, fire truck, garbage truck, a claw truck, a tanker trailer, tandem axle tractor, pontoon boat, loader, a van, a generator, mower, an electric car. All of these items have been identified for disposal due to age, non-performance, repair costs are becoming excessive, or they are obsolete for city operations. These items are currently stored at the Carillon Water Plant location, and they have presented storage deficiencies for operation equipment as well as safety concerns. Thus, this request comes before the city so that we can get for this board uh, for approval of public auction. Generally, the city uses online auctions for surplus equipment. This year is a, a little different. This method generally works well, but due to COVID-19 and limited staff available uh, to allow equipment inspections of prospective bidders, staff request council's approval to piggyback on the Lake County contract with George Gideon Auctioneers Inc. Incorporated located in Zellwood. Once the items have been auctioned off, funds will be deposited to the fund reserves of the fund owning the equipment. Florida Statutes um, Section 27407 states that equipment and property disposals shall be included in the minutes of the governmental board. And I just wanted to add a couple of items that I had not included in your agenda summary. Um, there is an average cost for pickup and delivery by Gideon of $91.66. The actual costs are $65 for less than three-quarter ton equipment, $85 for anything in excess of three-quarter ton to one ton, and then $125 for over one ton. And then there's a 5% commission. Um, this, this contract with Gideon is through Lake County, but it's a co-op contract of all cities located within um, Lake County as well. I have provided a list of all the items that are up for auction. There are quite a few. We generally wait till we have a few before we bring them to you for approval. So if you have any questions, John Rumble is in the audience as well, so we'd be happy to answer any, any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hilton. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Seeing no public input, I'll close it at this time. Cancel. Do you have any questions for Ms. Hilton or Ms. Um, Miss Alvin, when I was reading through this, uh, the one thing that caught my eye was the uh, claw truck. And Mr. William yelled at me last year, or what was it, two years ago, and the last time this topic came up before the council, and there was a fire truck, and I was really going crazy about that. But the idea that I could drive around town in a claw truck. I, I, I want to be the first bidder. I, I want to be the first one to bid on it. I want the call truck. What do you think that's going to go for? I think that uh, I really don't, don't know what it would go for. Uh, <laughs> Could you imagine how cool that would be to drive down? That's a lot of wear and tear, so it's hard to tell. But it has a call. Any other questions, Council? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to new business. 8A, 10 year anniversary of Seaplane Base and Marina. Mr. Gurry. Thank you. Oh, gosh. What is it? 12, 13 years ago, when I first came to this community. All the citizens were meeting in this room, some of you, and they were discussing the future of Tavares and where Tavares would be, what it would look like. I think there was one restaurant in town. Um, nobody really used the park much. There was a lot of homelessness in the park and issues in the park. And the back of those, um, the backs of the buildings were to the waterfront, and. The, it was a government town. There were government buildings all up and down Main Street. Drivers, education, probation, parole, clerk functions. I mean, it was just a different town. And the citizens were talking and saying, you know, Tavares is a town you drive around. You don't really drive to unless you're going to court, going to jail, or picking somebody up. And we want to change that. 
And so they banded together, hundreds and hundreds of residents. They met week after week, month after month, and they asked their city council to change this town from a town you drove around to a town you drove to. From a government-only town to a town that had a good quality of life, clean water, you couldn't see the bottom of the lake, clean water, restaurants, I think we had two events, and only two, and they wanted more events. And I was new to the community, and I listened. I didn't really participate much as far as advocating one way or another. I just listened to all the residents. And they met, and they talked, and they met, and they talked for a year. And finally, they came up with a plan, and they said, we want this community to be different than it was. We don't want it to be a government town, a one-horse town. We don't want it to be a town you drive around. And they developed a plan. And that council rolled up its sleeves and they heard their citizens. And every council to follow has been implementing that plan and moving this city forward the way those people and, and people that came after them wanted this community to change. And the results are stunning and amazing. Restaurants came to the community. Hotels came to the community. Values of property went up. We moved the clerk's building to the government center. We moved the parole, the probation, the driver this, the driver's that, the government buildings. And we created a campus at the end of our main street, almost like a university, a campus punctuated by the American flag, where you know where you can go now, if you want to do government services. It has not taken over the whole town. It's on the west end of our community. One of the most important parts of this was working with the community to identify its brand from any town USA to something else. Tiberias was any town USA for many, many years. And the citizens got together after developing this master plan and decided that it was time to brand itself America's Seaplane City. We had seaplanes here. Not many, but we had them. And to punctuate the brand, we held an event, a ribbon cutting. The governor of the state of Florida joined us. No governor had come to Tavares. I think the last governor that had come to any town USA was in 18 something. I think it was, there's a picture of a barbecue they had here. Where's Bob Tweed? I think there's one in your office. Uh, I think it was 1800s or, 19, or early 1900s. The governor of the state of Florida came to celebrate the ribbon cutting for that. And we have a photograph of the ribbon cutting of the Seaplane Basin Marina 10 years ago. This is the 10 year anniversary of implementing what the citizens of Tiberias asked these councils to do. I would like to update that photograph. As we all know, the uh, Irma came through and took that first seaplane base in Marina and tore it apart. We received insurance proceeds to replace it. The docks were delivered last week. They're on site and they're getting to be reinstalled. What I'd like to do is celebrate with you, this council, a new ribbon of the new seaplane base and marina, uh, and uh, punctuating the 10 year anniversary of that, because you are taking what your predecessors and citizens wanted, preserving it to what they wanted and making it better. Uh, so what I'm proposing is that Mark uh, work with this council to meet down at the new marina and we'll have a drone, we'll have some seaplanes and we update the photograph and the ribbon cutting both at the prop shop and where all the docks are. And that would occur in the next couple of days based on your schedule. Um, I think it's a really important thing to do and uh, it is the 10 year anniversary and it's the culmination 
of what the residents asked for and worked so hard on and that you continue to preserve and make happen. And the results have been amazing. From the job creation to the quality of life, you can see the bottom of the lake now. We've spent money on cleaning up the lake. We've got eat the eco park, cleans up everything. We have the hotels, we have the restaurants, we have the events. Basically, if you read that vision of 20 years ago, and you look at what we have today, that vision was implemented. And as we all know, a vision without implementation is a hallucination. It will never happen. This council and other councils implemented the citizen's vision. And you should be proud of that. I'm proud of it, and I'd like to punctuate it with a photograph of this council over the next two or three days if the council is amenable to that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Please come forward, say your name and address for the clerk, and you have three minutes. My name is Christy Farman. I'm at 204 North Rockingham here in Tavares. Please pull the microphone down so we can hear you better. Is that better? No, okay. I just wanted to, well, I just wanted to thank you, um, Mr. Drury, and all the council members. Um, I've been privy to uh, learn more about this community because of each of you, and I know that uh, the common folk that maybe aren't able to be here um, are aware of the selfless time and efforts that you put in to hear our voice and move forward to make this a better place, and I just want to thank you for your efforts and hard work. Thank you. Uh, which brings us, uh, anyone else from the audience? Ms. Aiden, please say your name and address for the clerk, and you have three minutes. Mm -hmm. My name is Diana Aiden, 714 North St. Clair Abrams Avenue. I just want to say thank you to the council and, and Mr. Drury. Um, I grew up in this town, went to school here, and I was here during that time, and it was like a one light town, and there was nothing here. And I live here downtown, and it's so nice to see and to go to downtown and see it flourish. And I just want to say thank you. Job well done. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Eaton. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak on this topic? Um, I'm going to close public input uh, and bring it back to council. Um, if we're going to get our picture taken, I refer it on Friday to get my haircut tomorrow, finally. So. Uh, <laughs> If you want to do this, I would just need to know your availability. You can start with a day. Um, uh, did you decide the drone and the photographs and the seaplanes? Is that a morning or afternoon thing? It would be a morning uh, photo, and Jones Brothers can probably pull together three seaplanes for us on Wednesday morning. Uh, uh, next week? Mark Thursday. Yeah. Thursday? Yes. Oh, Thursday of next week? Yes, Mr. Tweedy says Thursday of next week. All right, so you'll, you're going to get an email that asks if you're available Thursday next week at a time certain. If you are, we will hold it. We would like all five. If you are not, we will move it to a different time and a different date until we can get all five. But what I'm hearing is the council is okay with doing this. Anybody have any objection to having a photo Can we have fireworks? <laughs> You will be contacted for a Thursday photo shoot in the morning. If any of you can't make it, just let uh, Mark know. He'll email you, and we will reschedule for a different day. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Durian, which brings us back to new business. Is there any other new business? Um, may I bring up one issue? Mr. Stevenson. Uh, Chief Keith. Horrific. Uh, Robin Hudson. Not only was that a historic building in Tavares, but uh, I've known Robin for 20 years, and she's a really good girl. Uh, would you mind just giving us an update on what happened, where it stands now, what the prognosis, like diagnosis and prognosis is? Mr. Seems, I would love to, but I honestly don't know because it has to reset my investigation. So very briefly, there was a. Um, fire in an old building and our fire department responded and uh, that building uh, is uh, still there and um, 
no uh, lives were lost or injuries occurred. Uh, but yes, an old historic uh, building did catch a fire that we called for us responding to, and we responded to it, and we took care of it. If I can just add one more thing to that, I happened to stumble upon that right after, I guess it was reported, not after it initially occurred, but after it was reported, you guys are studs, man. You guys were all over the place, and it's impressive. Thank you for what you did. You guys are really, really impressive, Chief Any other new business? Seeing then we'll move on to old business. Is there any old business? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How about the, where are we with our golf cart crossing again? Remember we were going to get back on that or we kind of wait until after the election maybe because we might have, a, you know, we're going to have a new state representative which might could help. Is that what we're doing or have we? Yeah, we um, contracted out with an engineer to update the study. I believe the study has been completed or is about to be completed. And uh, Mike Fitzgerald um, will be here tomorrow, and I'll shoot uh, an update to everybody. But I believe he's waiting for the study to arrive on his desk, and then it will accompany a letter asking for um, the golf cart crossing to be reevaluated based on the updated engineer's report of the intersection of St. Clair, Abrams, and um, New 441. Thank you. Any other? Any other old business? All right, I'm um, going to move on to audience to be heard. Is anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard today? Mr. Watkins, Pastor Watkins, you have, please don't say your name and address, and you have three minutes. Uh, Michael Watkins, uh, 805 Summer Road, Evansville, Prairies. You know, I've been pastoring in this city for over 20 years, and the first uh, years that I was here, I didn't come to this city council meeting. I was doing other stuff. I just didn't think that I needed to come. But uh, a few years ago, some things started happening in our city and our county. And it made me aware that I need to be knowledgeable about what's going on. And so I want to specify this particular year, you guys with the budget. I commend you guys. I, I came to the meetings. I seen how you guys had to work through some things in a tough year. Uh, projecting what next year would be. So I commend you guys and uh, uh, Commissioner, I mean Councilman Arlington, I commend you for standing up and wanting the truth to get out. Because if somebody writes something that's not truthful about the city, the city should correct it in a truthful way. I found a lot of people who talk about transparency be shady with the stuff they're doing. And so if somebody is saying something about the city, that's not truthful. I commend you guys for uh, approving to put out something, a press release about what you actually did. And so I'm learning. I'm learning as I come and sit and hear how things are uh, deliberated, how decisions are being made. And I think you guys did a great job, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Pastor Watkins. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to be heard today? Would you guys please say your full name and address, and you have three minutes. I think she has a macro button. She just for that. Van Shoken, 12619, Milwaukee, very uh, different topic. Uh, one is to talk about the Mr. Drury here. Probably one of the better. Free. Yeah, one of the best. Would you, have some, would you mind adjusting your mic? Maybe that'll help that noise. There's some feedback in the microphone as well. Would you adjust your microphone? Maybe that would help. Yeah, I think it's the microphone that you're standing next to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An aura about me. <laughs> All right. We'll I wonder if it's the phone. Um, well, okay. The, uh, anyway, uh, I enjoy uh, trading the uh, facts with uh, Mr. Drury uh, all the time, and there is no doubt that very instrumental in uh, doing a lot of good things in this town. And one thing to know is that he understands costs and everything. So I have a question that uh, uh, actually relates to the homeless issue that uh, I'm glad uh, kudos on coming up with that because I watched the meetings of the county and the homeless issue is a problem here. 
And that leads to one of my topics of the month, and that's the uh, mobile homes and the fact that elders are constantly being harassed and being moved down. And uh, the, so I asked the uh, great uh, city clerk's office for a report of police incidents going to Palm Gardens. And uh, they have 90 lots. And there's over 600 of them in the last five years. So then I asked, well, do you have any cost estimates of what it costs, average cost, for a police call there? And the staff couldn't give me an answer. So the issue that I raised is that uh, I looked at the tax uh, rolls for that part, and they pay you $12,000 in taxes. Uh, and uh, I wondered whether you might uh, have the ability to come up with the cost of what it's costing you in code compliance checks and uh, police incidents, police calls, and other things, and determine whether uh, you think that maybe there needs to be an intervention. Uh, my view is uh, trailer parks, uh, there is a place where homeless do go. Low income people are going there. There's an awful lot of information out there on YouTube, and I've been collecting a lot of it. Uh, and uh, it is a real problem when they force elders out. Morning, I was talking to one that lived in that park. He went to the hospital. His home was torn down. Now, he was running it from another guy, but the home was torn down with all of his property and everything. And uh, they, they, these, let's say five to ten percent of these homeowners, uh, park owners, are acting like that. The others, I, it could be 90, 95 percent, are probably very good with their people. But it's at five percent, and there seems to be a real hole in, in the ability to deal with them because they're governed by a Florida statute, and local law doesn't have an effect, as Prime Minister Williams knows. But you could have an intervention. You could just call in and ask all the owners of all these mobile home parks, in, and uh, you could have like an intervention session where. And I can give you a list of all these types of things, violations that are going on with the Chapter 723. And you could ask them to uh, maybe uh, come up with some sort of a group solution that maybe will improve that. And maybe take on part of the homeless issue. Thank That's you, Mr. Walker. Can we? We're right on time. Uh, Does anyone else in the audience who'd like to be heard? Oh, don't forget your phone. <laughs> All right, seeing no one else in the audience wants to be heard, uh, I'll close that and move on to reports. Mr. Gurry. As was mentioned by the uh, Chamber Director this weekend, it is also the 10 year anniversary of the Jones Brothers, and they're doing a 10 10 10. Uh, 10 year anniversary, $10 for a 10 minute ride, and restaurants are getting involved, so you're around this weekend. Um, you can get a seaplane ride for 10 bucks. Not a bad deal. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Ms. Novak? Nothing weird, thank you. Chief? Nothing. Mr. O'Keefe? I think it's important that you know that I did find the scissors from 10 years ago. The big scissors. <laughs> and who were they signed by? Governor Charlie Crist. <laughs> he signed the scissors. The governor did. I had to sign the scissors out. So I have to return the scissors, but I will be at Hobby Lobby getting some ribbon this weekend if anybody wants to accompany me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rookie. Mr. Aldridge? Nothing, Mr. Clark? Happy October. Ms. Lewis? Nothing, Mr. Tweedy? Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Chief? Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Dillon? Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Houghton? Mr. Williams? I'm going to borrow uh, the truck if Roy buys it. Because <laughs> I have some brush I need to move. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Which brings us to council reports. Uh, Ms. Quigas? I wanted to thank Mr. Clark. Um, he, I went on a tour of Lake Francis Estate. The progress out there with that project was impressive and how well everything is kept on a daily basis. It, it, was, it was great to see. Um, so, commend you on that. Thank you. And um, our quote of the afternoon is, correction does much, 
but encouragement does more. And that is Johanna Wolfgang von Goethe. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Wiedis. Mr. Singer? Yeah, I just want to say I uh, had a really good time uh, this past weekend at the uh, Lake County Museum of the Arts uh, fundraiser. It's a great time. Uh, it's just nice to be out. And it's just it's nice to see all the things that are going on in the city's ferries. And we have you know, the art and culture right in our downtown area uh, to go along with our many restaurants, our uh, hotels, and all the other venues that we have downtown. You know, just uh, you know, a really great time. Looking forward to this weekend with the Jones Brothers 10 year reunion or anniversary. So uh, I'll be there checking out all the uh, festivities. And, you know, like uh, Miss Peyton had brought up, I, I too grew up when uh, the city of Tavares was a place that, you know, you didn't really come to. You weren't uh, proud to say you lived in Tavares. But now I must say I'm very proud of the city of Tavares and what it's come. And just, you know, can't wait for everything to come into the future. And this very exciting time that we're in right now. I uh, also just want to make mention that. October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and just want to make sure everybody uh, goes up and gets checked out. That's all I have there. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Uh, Mr. Stevenson? <clears throat> just one thing. Uh, Chief Lubins, I want to thank you, sir. Uh, and I just want to make this comment that I'm used to looking over here, and I'm used to seeing Mr. Tweedy sitting at this table. But I notice when we start talking about the uh, uh, marina and the seaplane base, all of a sudden, Mr. Tweedy's in the back of the room, right beside Jonathan Hall, who, other than Shaquille O'Neal, is the largest police officer I've ever seen in my entire life. So, well played, Mr. Tweedy. I know what you're up to. It's not lost on me, sir. That was all I had. Vice Mayor Fister? Yeah, I want to tell y'all, I don't ever mention about a business, but y'all know that Buster Tub sold and everybody keeps asking me what's going on. And I'm only asking you this, and I've never asked this before, but the gentleman who bought it, his name's Amon, and the reason why the building is just sitting there, he's painted it and everything, but his 15-year-old son has brain cancer. So he's been, it just came up, so he's been in California. He's back now, but I just want y'all to keep him in his prayers because it's a, a new guy here who's, he's not from here, he's from Windermere, but still, he's a new business owner here, so I just want y'all to keep him in his prayers, and he is working pretty hard on, on getting things open, so watch out for that. Thank you. All right, and without any further ado, this meeting is closed, or adjourned, I don't know what we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs>